Hi all. So uh, today we're building another keypad that I designed. Uh, it has a very cool thumb cluster and it's designed in such a way that you could use it for um, four directional movement, you know, just like an analog joystick. The geometry of the thumb cluster makes it easy to hold several keys at the same time. That's like the key idea behind it. I went into in-depth explanation uh, of why I think it's critical to move away from the WASD movement paradigm in my previous video. So please go do check it out. Um, and in case you're wondering why I'm not using the actual analog joystick, well, uh, I am and I love it, uh, but unfortunately it comes at a cost of compatibility. Uh, as far as I'm aware, analog joysticks only work as plug and play devices when they are licensed through Sony and Microsoft uh, and um, uh, you know, contain an uh, identification chip uh, soldered on the PCB. Uh, I made an analog joystick work with the help of third-party emulators, uh, but they only work on Windows uh, and um, are quite finicky to set up and use. That's why we are building a fully compatible keypad that is truly plug and play and supports all platforms, including Mac, which is important for me. Another added benefit is that it works just fine with the WASD uh, approach if, you know, if that's what you like. Uh, so you can, you, know, you can use it however you like, basically. At this point, I have almost completed the build and in this video, I will be sharing what the process was like for assembling, soldering, and improving the acoustic properties of the keypad. Hopefully you can tell from this audio how much softer and as they say creamier the switches on the left sound compared to the ones on the right. We will start with lubricating the switches with a grease. A few other tools I use to complete builds like this are a small paintbrush. Um, there it is. Uh, then uh, I have a stem holder. And an absolutely critical tool to have, a switch opener. Additionally, I use an acrylic laser cut plate to hold the pieces in place during the grease application. I'm going to quickly disassemble the finger column to get access to the mechanical switches and start applying the lubricant. And I want to mention that since these mechanical switches uh, aren't of any kind of premium variety, improving their feel and um, audio profile is even more relevant. The lubrication process is a laborious task. In this case, I have 24 mechanical switches in total. So we're taking care of the remaining four. With the switches done, we are ready to trim and strip the wires and prepare the diodes. I'm giving every diode a nice tug to make sure they're all soldered correctly. And with that, we are ready to move on to another sound improvement technique that eliminates the hollow sound coming from the plastic case. It's fairly easy to do and makes a huge difference in how the keys sound. We are almost done with the finger tower. The finishing touch is to thread the wires through the braided sleeve.
Now I'm ready to start connecting the tower wires uh, to the microcontroller board, and I really need to figure out how to make this process easier. Overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I made sure uh, every solder joint is properly insulated here. Adding sound and dampening and foam will dramatically improve the audio profile of the largest and most hollow chamber of this device. Finally, I'm loosening up the finger column screws. This will allow me to perfectly adjust it to the length of my fingers. And with that, we have a completed keypad that is flying off to a friend tomorrow as a birthday gift.